My name's Lexi, and I'm a senior at the University of Oklahoma, and I'm a scribe in the ER, and I'll be taking over today. So being a scribe entails that I work directly with the physicians, I visit patients with them, and I do all of the charting for them. So I'll also be graduating in May with my bachelor's in health and exercise science. So I heard about being a scribe through my advisor, and you had to have a certain GPA, and you had to be either pre-PA, nursing, pre-med, pre So I was hired on as a scribe in May, and I didn't actually get to start working in the ER until about six months after because it took so long to get certified. So in order to start scribing, I had to get my BLS certification and do whatever training was required. When I applied for the position to be a scribe, the minimum GPA was a 3.0, but I'm sure that varies depending on where you apply. So it is not required that you need a bachelor's degree in order to be a scribe where I work, but for some places I've heard it is required. So once I got hired on as a scribe, I had to get my BLS certification and then take a final exam and get a minimum of 80% on it. After I passed the required exam, I had to do five training shifts with a trainer before I could start on my own. The reason it took me so long to actually start scribing is because it took about four months to get credentialed for employment at OU Medical Center. There are four different shifts that scribes can work. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., 4 p.m. to 2 a.m., or 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. So typically, I usually work the 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift or the 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. And since school has started back up, if I work the 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift, I usually have to go straight to class after I get off work, which is kind of hard sometimes. The thing that I love most about being a scribe is the challenge that it brings and the variety of patients and symptoms that I see each day I work. There's not anything that I necessarily dislike or hate about being a scribe, but one thing that was hard to adjust to is trying to learn how each physician likes their chart. Some physicians are very dictative and they'll tell you exactly what, you, what they want you to put on the chart, and others prefer the bare minimum on their charts. As a scribe, I am responsible for time stamping when radiology reads are back, when lab results are back, and what those results are. And it is also my responsibility to timestamp when the physician consults another department and if that patient is admitted or if they're just being seen. Being a scribe can be very strenuous at times because if you're on a night shift and you get three traumas in and there's only one doc, you're responsible for seeing. So like I said, we are responsible for seeing all those traumas. Plus, we have to make sure that all the other patients that we have are being taken care of too. Some days being a scribe is a 1 out of 10 on the stress level because sometimes we'll only see 5 patients within 10 hours. But on the other hand, while on the other hand, it can be a 10 out of 10 on the stress level because we're having to see, let's say, 10 p patients within an hour, and that's very hectic. As a scribe, I do wear scrubs to work, and we are required to wear a black top, scrub top, and black scrub pants. In order to keep track of each patient, what their symptoms are, their history, I have a notebook specifically for my job and I take that to each. And then after a patient is discharged or admitted to another department of the hospital, I just scratch off their chart and go to the next page. Sometimes it is difficult to keep up with the physicians. So you have to have very fast writing skills and it doesn't really matter if it's needed or not because you're the only one who has to read it. <laughs> Another skill that is recommended to be a scribe is fast typing skills. And since I've become a scribe, I can probably type about 70 to 80 words per minute. So for a scribe chart, the first tab that we usually fill out is HPI, which is History of Present Illness. That's your chief complaint, what they're here for, how long. The next tab that we fill out is ROS, which is Review of Systems. And then the next tab is Past Medical History. And then after that is a after past medical history, there is a tab to insert EKG readings and then pulse oximetry and lab and imaging statements. The next tab is the MDM, which is medical decision making. And there we kind of write everything where we timestamp the consultations, what the readings were. 
what the readings were from radiology, what the lab results show, reevaluations on the patient, if the patient is feeling better or getting worse. The last tab that we fill out is the depart tab, and there we put the clinical impression of the patient, if they're being discharged to home, if they need to follow up, if they're being admitted. I do believe that being a scribe is a very important job because if scribes did not exist, physicians would spend about two days just on charting alone. Another aspect of being a scribe that I enjoy the most is I'm able to sit in on procedures that the physicians do to patients, which is really neat. I'm able to sit in on procedures like draining an abscess, sutures, conscious sedation, extracting foreign bodies, intubation. From my knowledge, being a scribe does count as patient contact hours if you plan to apply to med school, PA school, NP school, things of that nature. On a typical week, I will usually work about 30 hours, which is three, shift because, three shifts because each shift is 10 hours. Something that I'm learning to balance this semester is working almost full-time and also attending school full-time. In Oklahoma, the average salary range for a scribe is about $11.50 an hour. In my personal opinion, I do believe that I am underpaid considering how much work I do and how strenuous the job can actually be. The scribe company that I work for is called QuestCare. I found out about the scribe job through my advisor who then sent me the link to the website to apply and it had all the requirements listed before I could apply. Something I recommend doing if your advisors don't tell you about these job opportunities is go on Indeed.com and type in Medical Scribe and then put your region in. So search Medical Scribe, type what location you're in, and it should pop up a list of available scribe jobs in your area. If you're looking to go into the medical field, such as being a PA, a nurse, an NP, or a physician, I would highly recommend finding a scribe job. There's so much hands-on experience available, and just by listening to the doctors talk to each other, you learn so much. It's crazy. Once the imaging is uploaded for each patient, the physicians will actually call you over and walk through the reports with you and show you any abnormalities. So I just got asked a question about how many credit hours I'm taking this semester, and I am taking 15 credit hours while working about 30 hours a week as a scribe. For those of you who are pre-med students, I would say that being a scribe is doable, but I wouldn't work as much as many hours as I do because it's very difficult. But like I said earlier, if you're trying to get really good experience before applying to pre-med schools, I would definitely recommend being a scribe. I do have quite a bit of volunteer hours, but the majority of them we're not in the medical field, which is why I think being a scribe really made up for that part. I'm getting a lot of questions about what I want to do after I graduate in May, and I've decided to apply to a few grad schools for healthcare administration. There are a lot of career options available that go underrated, such as healthcare administration, public policy, public health, and if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to ask me. I had to do a lot of research before I found out about these career options and I know how hard it can be to actually find what you want to do. So after doing a lot of research and meeting with advisors and meeting with people who work in that field, I decided to take on the business side of the medical field. So I'm getting a lot of repetitive questions that have to do with the website to look for medical scribing jobs. So it's indeed.com. It gives you an option to search what kind of job you're looking for. So you would type in medical scribe and then just put the city and uh, state that you're located in. So working as a scribe, I don't have to be committed for a certain amount of years in order to sign a contract. Okay, y'all, well, I'm about to sign off here just because I have a ton of schoolwork to get done. And, of course, a shout-out to Andrea for having me on here and letting me share what I do for a living with you guys. Thank you so much.